Well, I don't want to brag, but I grew up very privileged. I mean, we grew up in a high-rise apartment on the east side. And we had a maid, and she was so funny. What was her name? Uh, her name was Florence. And that wasn't me. That was the Jeffersons, because I grew up in the country, and I hated it. The reason why I hated it, because everyone was like, oh, the country, oh, the fresh air, oh, you're in Salisbury, it's great, it's not. This is my mother. Daryl, go outside and play. There is so much wrong with that sentence. Go? Do you see this stack of Nancy Drew novels right here? I am happy reading inside. And yes, boys can read Nancy Drew. Go outside? It's hot. And you know I'm allergic to mosquitoes and bugs and bees. No, thank you. I'm, right, I'm good right here. And play, do you mean kick or throw or try to catch a ball? when other boys would make fun of me? No, thank you. I am good right here, and I can't wait till I get out of the country, because I don't belong here. Where do I belong? In the big city. And one night, when I was nine years old, I had the opportunity to get to the big city, because this is what happened. So my Aunt Neat and my Uncle Josh and their beautiful daughter, Camille, came down to visit. They lived in Philadelphia. And for me, that's the big city. So they came down from Philadelphia. And because we had company, I got a chance to wear pajamas. And pajamas for nine-year-old Daryl Smith, so sophisticated as he was at nine, was a big deal. I'm not just sleeping in my drawers, I'm wearing pajamas. <laughs> and these were new pajamas, and they were cream colored. They had little sailor anchors here and little boats on them, and I looked good. And in my mind, I thought, if I'm really good, and I really show, you know, like there's Shirley Temple in me, <laughs> they'll take me back to the big city. <laughs> so here I am. Our little house. Running around the house trying to impress my aunt and my niece to take me back to the big city. So I'm running around the house, living room, dining room, kitchen, hallway, just running in my pajamas, living room, dining room, kitchen, hallway. My mother, Daryl. You better stop all that running around if you know what's good for you. Well, I do know what's good for me, running around this house so I can get out of this country. So I take one more turn. I'm going to run again. Living room, dining room, kitchen, hallway. Still haven't got everybody's attention, so I'm going to do it one more time. Living room, dining room, kitchen, what is this? On the floor in the kitchen, three $20 bills. Yeah. And I Googled it. In 1970, three $20 bills equals $400. So I have my ticket now to get out of the country. So I grabbed the little $20 bills, stick them in here. Run back up, kiss everybody goodnight, you know, because I'm just so happy. Then I go up on my little bunk bed, put the $20 bills under my pillow, and I'm just sitting there thinking, oh, my God, I'm getting out. <laughs> and then me and my favorite cousin, Camille, we can live together in the big city. Yeah, not in some crazy West Virginia cousin's way. No, I'm nine years old. I just wanted to live with her like if we were, I don't know, like if we were on Friends in New York, but we're black and it's just the two of us, it'd be great. 
Oh, it was like, here comes Daryl and Camille, like Laverne and Shirley getting little capers and stuff. It'd be great. So I'm just thinking, yes, yeah, so all this is going to happen. Funny, I can get out of this Salisbury. <sighs> and then my mother, you know, her little tired self, she comes in and she says, Daryl, did you see, find some money in the house? And I'm like, huh? She said, well, Daryl, you know, there was some money. Did you find anything? And I put my head down and I say, no. <laughs> mm -mm. And you know, and back then I wasn't lying, so she believed me. So she just leaves the house, leaves my little bedroom, and she goes back out, and I'm thinking, okay, I got it now. So now, you know, Camille is just so fabulous, and Camille is just so beautiful, and we're gonna live together. And she was taking pictures, and I could buy the, you know, I could buy the film with my $60, and I could be her model, and we'd just go to New York, and we'd just have this beautiful life, me and Camille. It was a great, because one thing about Camille, not only did she take pictures, she was so photogenic. I mean, she was beautiful and is beautiful. She has this long, beautiful hair, and her face is so pretty. And she has a chicken pock mark, which most people think is terrible, but hers is right here in the center of her face. It's a little diamond that just accents her beautiful face. She's wonderful. And she was always so nice to me that I knew I was going to live with Camille. So I'm laying in the bed thinking, I got away with it. And then my mother comes back. Daryl. Ooh, voice a little stronger now. Y yeah? Are you sure you didn't find three $20 bills? Oh, three $20 bills. Oh. Oh, you know, is this what you meant? Oh, yeah, I have that. <laughs> so I reach into my pillow. You know, my hand is shaking a little bit. And I give her the three $20 bills. And she just looks at me and says, Daryl, that's not like you. And it, that hurt so much. That really stung because now I knew how much I disappointed her. But, you know... A lot of this was her fault. I mean, she's the one that dressed me up in pajamas. She's the one that brought Camille and Aunt Neat and Uncle Josh down here. You know, really, I'm kind of blaming her because, you know, I'm just nine. So I'm the victim in this story. I'm nine. So I'm laying there, gave back the $20. I'm not going to the big city. I'm going to have to live here in Salisbury. But the next summer, my mother let me stay the whole summer in Philadelphia with Camille. Yeah. And look where I live right now. Washington, D.C. The big city! And you should see my collection of pajamas. Thank you.